Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time. Sat Chat, the weekly wrap up. What's been going on with my life? What's been going on with your life? What's been going on in the art world writ large? That's what we're going to talk about today. Well, I don't know. We're going to chit chat. It's Thursday morning. It's actually 9.32 Thursday morning when I'm filming this um, because I really wanted to make sure I got a chance to film this this week. Last week I didn't have a sat chat so I posted one of the, uh, you know how I said sometimes I do like random uh, kind of talking about a topic videos that I don't end up posting? I kind of have those in the can for times when um, when I don't have a sat chat ready. And last week uh, we had a big holiday weekend or long holiday weekend going and I just, um, I had a lot going on. I needed a few days off. I just need to kind of just uh, decompress a little bit and I had a lot of fun things planned and I just didn't want to cram one more thing in. Um, so Friday, I usually film on Fridays and I was gonna, I was gonna, I kind of think, well maybe I can get sat chat filmed Friday morning before I go out with my friend. Um, but one of my bestest college friends came up and we went guitar shopping and just spent the day together. It was really fun, really nice. I think it's nice to get together with people that knew you when you were basically a kid, like younger, because it kind of reminds you of um, how uh, optimistic, youthful, and carefree you used to be, you know? And I think I'm still pretty optimistic, but it's just kind of, it's kind of good to hang out with those people that knew you when. And then on Saturday, Jason and I went out to Umami for dinner, and it's kind of this, um, this noodle place, and they have like really yummy curries and stuff like that, so we went out on Saturday night to that. And it was really, it's been really nice. Weather's been really nice. It was pretty nice on Saturday. Then Sunday, I knew it was going to be 80. So earlier last week, I made plans with my old college roommate to go to the beach. So there's like this beach that's about halfway between us, about a half an hour from each of us. We live about an hour away from each other. And so we met there and uh, we spent a few hours uh, just kind of hanging out in the sun. And the water was like ice bucket challenge, cold. Oh my word, it was so hot. It was like in the 80s, which is like you're going from like 60s to 80, like in the blink of an eye here in Maine. And uh, I even brought like a, um, like a float that you go out and float on. I like got about half deep in the water. I just kind of splashed some on me to cool off. And I'm like, that's all I can do. It is too cold. <laughs> it's just too cold. But it was nice to hang out. And uh, again, you know, old friends. Old friends are so fun. And then on Monday, uh, Sarah had a cookout and I told her everybody, uh, I told her that everyone says hello and she says hello to everybody. Um, so Sarah, if you remember the old live streams I used to do, Sarah was my co-host and she used to moderate the chat and whatnot. So she's doing well, her family's doing well. Um, and yeah, that was, that was my, my whirlwind weekend. But yeah, I took a few days off other than just making sure that people were all set in the teachable school because I did have a Memorial Day sale going. So I just want to make sure everybody was, uh, had what they needed. And, um, but other than that, I took some time off and it was just nice to really just, uh, Ah, <sighs> decompress a little bit. I needed that. Um, sometimes you don't realize how much you're doing and how much you're working until you actually take a break for a couple of days. And I have a hard time doing that because I work from home, so it's so easy just to pop into the office just for, well, let me just check this real quick. Let me do that real quick. And we all have phones. We all have our the connections on our phones where, you know, we can check in all the time. And it's just kind of nice just to unplug for a couple of days, which I did. Um, so new stuff. I've got this up in Critique Club. You may have rec recognized this if you've been following the channel for the last couple of years. I did back in 2020 when um, everything had shut down, the uh, like uh, like in-person workshops had shut down and whatnot. I was contacted by Art of the Carolinas, which is run through Jerry's Artorama. They usually do this um, uh, in-person workshop in, I think it's North Carolina. And they wanted to bring it virtual, so they hired me to do three lessons or three classes. This was one of the classes I did, and I had recorded my practice one, like when I was designing it, I recorded it so I could use that footage in one of my classes in the future, and I lost the footage. And uh, I was going through my um, my artwork, my past artwork, because I had to get some photographs that were a certain orientation for a project, a workshop I have coming up next year. And I came across that. I'm like, oh yeah, I wanted to do that for a, this is the redo one actually. Uh, I wanted to do that for a class. And then I thought, well, I still have to get my second Critique Club project for May done. So I decided to go ahead and re-record that. So that's up in Critique Club. I will have a link to that in the video description. This painting here, I just posted on YouTube on Wednesday. This is a uh, view of Mount Washington. My friend Lincoln had taken this gorgeous, he takes so many gorgeous photos when he's hiking. And I finally worked up the nerve to say, hey, would you mind if I paint 
and it was a different photo actually, it just kind of caught my eye, the light was so good. I said, would you mind if I painted this? Uh, I used it as a reference on one of my paintings I do on YouTube, and he's like, absolutely, that'd be awesome, go for it. He goes, you can use any of my photos. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. And then he posted that one, and I'm like, oh, the rocks, man. Oh, baby, I love me some rocks. So I like I had to do that one. Um, so, uh, so that was really fun. And also this week, I did that review. I remember, I don't know if you remember the last Sat Shot, I asked you, if, should I do a review on a product that I don't really like? And, um, and I wasn't going to do the review except I had seen a few reviews that were positive for this product and I'm like, well, I disagree with those reviews. I don't think the reviewers had any like ill intent. I just think that was their opinion, my opinion different. And I'm like, well, you know what? I think I will put my review out there just because, um, uh, because you should have as many different points of reference to go from so you can make an accurate decision yourself. And I'm like, and then again, I was also thinking, well, maybe I'm missing something. So I'm like, well, let me do another painting with these paints. And I ended up painting this. I did doctor it up with some colored pencils because to me it was just feeling a little too flat and blah. And I do like how it looks with the colored pencils. But uh, that review of Meat and Watercolors is also up on my channel. And I'm thinking about maybe doing this painting as a live stream at some point this summer. So if that's something you find interesting. I don't think I want to record this whole thing, but I would do it as a live stream. I find that sometimes when I redo a painting, I mean, that one, is, there's been so much time between that painting when I first did it and when I did it now, and also it's lots of bright colors, and I find that still very inspiring. Um, I struggled with this painting using those paints. I'm going to use different paints with it if I do the live stream. Um, so I don't just want to redo it again because like I'm, I still remember the battle. I still remember the frustration. So I doing it as a live stream, then it's, I don't know, it, it adds a new energy to it because I get to, I get to hang out with you guys and the feedback from you, the invigoration, you know, it's just, I feel like live stream work can sometimes be a little bit, kind of pump me up a little bit because like you guys are right there and I'm hearing your feedback on in real time. And it's just kind of, it's kind of fun. Kind of, it's kind of like how we are in Sat Chat in the comments because we're all kind of talking to one another and, uh, and that feedback is awesome. And um, I do want to say there may be, I may, I'm waiting to hear back. My, uh, my dad's in the hospital and he went in yesterday afternoon. My sister has, uh, she texted me to let me know and we haven't been able to get a hold of anybody. So um, if I am not around on Sat Chat morning, Saturday morning, and one of the, another reason why I'm doing this today, because there's nothing else I can do at this moment. Um, if I am not around, it may have something to do with that. So just uh, just keep that in mind. I'm not ignoring anybody or um, uh, abandoning you on purpose, but um, if my dad's in the hospital and uh, then I'm going to go and he can have visitors and I'm going to go and see him, obviously. So, um, so okay, no more bummer. I just wanted to put that out there. I didn't want you to feel like, oh, she's abandoning us. Um, not that you would. You guys are awesome, but Anyway, uh, so another project I was working on that took me way too long this week that I, it was kind of one of those things like, I'm almost there, I've almost got it. So you know when you're doing a project and you're like, you just, you're so close to figuring it out. So you can't like, you can't put it down. You got to keep like picking away at it. So this, well, I'll show you the before. So you probably remember this palette. Maybe you do. I don't know. You might remember this palette from the review I did of it. This is a Supervision 24 pan set, or maybe from my artist grade watercolor, um, ranking or maybe for my palette tour. I don't know. This has been featured a few times. Uh, I've used it in a couple of paintings, but I don't know if I've actually used it in a tutorial. How sad is that? So this is how it comes. The reason I don't use this very much is because I need a separate mixing area when I use it because the lid, which would be perfect for a mixing area, is dark charcoal. Uh, so it's really difficult to mix on this because you don't really know what you're getting because you're seeing that dark color. You don't have something light underneath it to reflect. Even if this was clear, I could set it over a white piece of paper and mix on it. So that's what's kept me from using this. So I'm thinking, I've been thinking ever since I got this, I would like to make a cover for this that's light. And look, I could laminate some cardstock. I could do this, I could do that. And so then I thought, well, you know, I've got UV resin and it's a really sunny day. So I decided I would make a cover out of UV resin. And this is what I made. It's, uh, it's got this, it's resin, it's got some glitter in it, uh, it's slightly bowed, but it does sit flat this way for mixing. It stains, it's not perfect, <laughs> but, um, but it was kind of interesting to make. I've got some big in monogram initials with glitter in them. I had fun with it. Um, there's magnets, rare earth magnets in there. It will hold on there, but it's so heavy that it does want to slide. It doesn't want to slide off if I have it at too extreme of an angle. And there's a big old gap in the middle. So this boat, I think it's because the silicone mat I had this on was sitting on top of a piece of chloroplast that had a little bit of a bow to it. I don't know. Or maybe just UV resin this large will do that. I'm not sure. But it's done. It's kind of cute. It's um, sparkly and perfect and colorful. 
just like your jewelry, jewel, jewel, jewelry, truly. Oh my word, it's too early for this. It's too early. Everyone says, how are you so bright eyed and bushy tailed Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. when Sat Chat goes up? It's because I filmed it a day or two earlier when I was fully caffeinated and camera ready. Yeah, there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no mystery there. I feel like I've, I've been like talking for an hour. It's only 10 minutes in. That is crazy. Uh, so I have kind of been, I, I kind of haven't been, um, other than the meat and paint review, which I was kind of disappointed in, I haven't really been reviewing many or even finding many like awesome quality cheap art supplies, which is what people really love. They love the awesome quality cheap art supplies, but I feel like everything is just the same over and over again. We talked about that in last week's video a bit. We were talking about the decline in art supply quality and whatnot, but I decided that um, I really enjoy using gouache. I've been using this, um, the Artsy uh, 24 set that's no longer available. I think it was, I've been using that for like three years. I'm still using up some of those big pots of color. And I've also been using the Anagani set that I got last year, which is also from Artsy. The quality is very similar, so, uh, but it's a huge set. It's like 56 colors. I've been using that a lot. And I've been really liking it, but I've also kind of been wondering about the other uh, more professional gouaches. I have some M. Graham. I have a few tubes of M. Graham. I have some Lucas. Um, but I don't really have a lot of, like, better grades of gouache, because I really don't find a huge difference between the cheaper grade, as long as the good quality, inexpensive grade and the, um, the artist grade that I've tried. So I did because I've had so many people ask about it. And, um, my friend Angela from Clark Fine Art showed me her swatches of the Daniel Smith gouache she bought. I decided I would get a few tubes of that to try. So I have a little mini haul here. I know you, right? Um, I've actually had a few things like in my cart for months. And I've been waiting to have enough to get free shipping to order. So I ordered the um, Daniel Smith Extra Fine Primary Mixing Set. So this way, because I actually I went to Fiddleheads in Belfast a couple weeks ago, and I was gonna, I was look, they had the Daniel Smith gouache, and I was thinking about buying a few tubes, but it was so expensive that just to buy, like, I'd want to have at least, like, five colors to try, and we would be spending, like, $100. So, um, this set of primaries and white was $40 on Blick. So, you've got a Hansa Yellow Medium, Pyrrole Red, Ultramarine Blue, and Titanium White. Those are fairly neutral. Ultramarine's a little bit warm, Pyrrole is a little bit warm, and the Hansa Yellow Medium is pretty neutral, but, so, I might get kind of muted mixes. I might need to go with some cool primaries, which I could just, I might just grab for my cheap stuff, honestly. Or I might get a, um, a tube of phthalo blue or, or um, and maybe a, like a rose or something. And then I also picked up a tube, and these are 15 ml tubes. So I, want, I just wanted to be able to have enough to like do a fair review. Cause if you don't have enough, then enough colors to mix with and you can't really do a fair review. And I got this uh, Burnt Umber because the Burnt Sienna looked really red in the swatches on Blick and the Burnt Umber looked a little bit more neutral. And where I have the Pyrrole Red, which I could tint, I could move the um, uh, the Burnt Umber over a little bit warmer if I needed to. I figured that would be a better choice. So we'll see. I might wish that I had grabbed a, um, like a Quin Rose and a uh, and a phthalo blue, but we'll get started there and then I can always order those later if I need to. I, I'll probably just add in from maybe one of my, maybe my Anagani set just to see if I need it, basically. And then um, I've really been curious about the art creation sketchbooks and this one I think was around seven, I was so bummed because a, a couple months ago, maybe it was like a month ago, I don't know, I had gone on to Blick and I was just kind of making my fantasy if you ever do that, you go into like, you feel kind of, you feel like you want something, but you know, you don't need anything. So you just kind of put stuff in a shopping cart just to see like how much it's going to cost. And I had a bunch of these sketchbooks in there because I was, oh, I put eight, two of the sketchbooks in the square and then the like eight by five size. And the prices were like five fifteen on this and like seven eighty eight on the other one. And I was like, what? That was crazy. And so I was like, oh, I think maybe I'll order a bunch of these if the price is so low. And so I was putting stuff in my cart and then I put something else on the cart and all the prices shot up on the sketchbooks. And, I, and I'm like, why was it doing that? It was weird because it wasn't like the price were the sales page, it was higher than when I put it in my cart, it was lower. I don't know why, because it was a sale price. You couldn't use a coupon on it or anything. So anyway, I'm like, well, well now I'm not paying $7 for this one. I just saw it for five, you know, at the same website. I'm just gonna wait for that sale. I waited and waited. And so finally, I had some other things that I was waiting to order. So I'm like, no, Lindsay, buy one. Let's see if you actually like this paper before you go and buy 20 different sketchbooks as you want one in every color because they're cute 
don't be insane. So I bought one and I got the square size because let's face it, most of my artwork is seen on Instagram. And if I start off with a square, it's just easier. And that's another thing I've been kind of like, uh, this is another reason I needed a few days off because I was just feeling like I am creating so much for this tiny little screen that people scroll by in like two seconds, maybe drop a like, but don't really see, don't really care about why am I putting so much effort into that when I don't know if anyone really cares. Um, so yeah, that's why my, my friend from Friday asked if, um, do you ever, do you, do you work large anymore? And I'm like, since I started YouTube, honestly, no, I, I don't. I, it's my work has gotten smaller and smaller. It's gotten to format to fit social media screens. And I'm like, what is life? What am I doing? You know? Um, but I also do like to work square. So, and this is like, this is an achievable size. This is something I could do every day. So I don't know. It's just, I'm definitely contemplating the inner workings of my brain, social media, why I feel I need this validation from strangers on the internet and everything. But still, I bought a square sketchbook. So we got a long way to go, friends. <laughs> I probably need a psychiatrist. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to get. Um, I wanted to, many years ago, at this little store in, or it's so funny because somebody just in the comments mentioned this store and I was like, whoa, blast from the past because they have been closed for like at least 20 years. I don't think, I think they were closed before my kids were born and my oldest is 20, almost 21. So uh, there's this little shop in Orono called Art Etc. And it was a cutest little shop and the shopkeeper was very, very, I don't know, strangely aggressive and weird, but um, they had they had some cool stuff and they had the set of Karen Dosh watercolor crayons and they didn't say student grade or anything, but they were half sticks and they were like 15 colors. And um, I had used a friend's new color twos and I really liked them. So man, this was longer than that. This was like late nineties because I was still, I was uh, working at the senior center. I hadn't, I hadn't bought my big set of new colors yet. Um, and so they had half stick set and, um, and then I, and it was like $11. This was back in the late 90s. It was $11, 11 something. I thought that's a great deal. And then I saw this. It looks exactly like the set I bought, except the one I had had a clear like acrylic cover on it. And this looks like it's supposed to have a brush with it, but maybe not. Um, and this was like $8 on Blick. So I'm curious to see how these are. And I'm going to compare them to my Neo, Neo Color 2 crayons I have now. And also any of the little nubbins I have from that old set, if I have any left. But I'm curious about that. So this is the aquarelle or watercolor soluble, water soluble pastels from Karen Dosh. So it's like the student grade of the Neo Color 2s. Or maybe it's just smaller pieces. I'm not sure. So that's what I want to check out. Because if they're the same quality, then like if you want to take my watercolor crayon workshop, you can get these buddies and uh, save yourself some money. Decide whether you like the medium a lot. And then you can invest in a larger set or open stock or whatever. So I'm curious to see if these are any different than the Neo Color 2s. And because it may not be, it might be just as cheap for them to just produce the same things and just chop them in half and, and do that. I bet there's as much. Oh, let's see. I bet there's as much in one of these sticks than what's in one of these woodies. So I'll have to also compare them to the uh, Stabilo woodies, which is going to, which is going to cause some hate. See, that's another reason why I asked, should I do the negative? Should I do my critical review of, of the meat and watercolors after the hate that I got on my Stabilo Woody's review. So this is the Woody that I, I whittled it down to see how much uh, medium was actually in the stick, the sticks that are this long, like to see how much is actually usable product, which I mean, yes, I get, you'd have to sharpen it and you'd waste it anyway. So whatever. So I'm just going to see, okay, so this is shorter than the actual product in a Woody by about three quarters of an inch. Well, actually, it may be more like an inch. So it is less media than what's in a Woody, but way cheaper. It's eight bucks, eight bucks for this thing uh, at Lick. I'll put a link in the video description if you're curious about that, because it isn't going to come up if you search. I don't think it will come up if you search watercolor crayon or Neo Color 2. Um, might come up if you search Karen Dosh crayon. I think you have to sw search Swiss color, but anyways, I'll put a link. And then I ordered these because I love the Neo Color ones as well. They're the non water soluble wax pastels. I wish I knew about them before they reduced their line because they are just, they are so wonderful. And like, since I tried those, I've been like trying to find a less expensive equivalent for people, but I don't know if there, there's going to be one, but this is the, uh, like the non water soluble wax pastel. So I want to compare these to the Neo Color ones and see how these rate, because again, 
if they are as nice, then you could just get this set and because they're so slow wearing, then you could just get the colors that you wanted in the other in the other range if it's cheaper for you. So those are those are some things I bought to review. And then um, I was watching some CA, some uh, Namta and Creativation coverage and I saw the Niji booth and they had these artist crayons that looked exactly like the Jane Davenport Power Pastels that I don't think you can buy anymore which are really kind of fun, but it's a bummer when you use something and there's nothing equivalent that you can say, go, yeah, just go use these. They're, they're just the same because they were just different. And I'm thinking that, yeah, these look just like the Jane Davenport ones. So I'm going to compare these to the Jane Davenport Power Pastels that you can't get anymore. So I'm really excited about these. For one, they're very affordable. I think these were around $10. Maybe they were $8. I can't remember, but it was 15, the 15 colors, 18 colors for like $10 or so. Uh, I don't, I don't have an invoice in here, so I can't tell you exactly, but I think it was around $10. Um, but they look just like the Jane Davenport Power Pastels, and they're kind of like oil pastels, but they're different. They're more like, um, they're waxier than oil pastels, but they're also more oil, oilier. I'd say they're oilier than oil pastels. They're very, there's a different texture to these. They're softer than the other art crayons that I've used. They're kind of greasy, but not the same as an oil pastel. They have a little more drag. They're just, but they're also thicker. They're weird, they're different, and um, they're fun. And so I'm hoping that these are the same as the Power Pastels and then people have an alternative. Either they've used up some Power Pastels and they want to replace them, but these are so much cheaper. Um, so I thought that that would be really fun to check out. So there's my little mini Blick haul. And you can let me know what you're most interested in in the comments below. I know I have a little obsession with crayons and pastels. Travel watercolor palettes um, and crayons. I don't know why. I think it's because I feel like those types of media are just so um, whimsical and it's like crayons we can all use crayons we all use crayons as kids it's, it, it brings us back to our childhood and it's just very freeing and direct and then with travel watercolor palettes i mean anything is possible what kind of adventure are you going to have with this palette i'm sure that's part of like what lures me into the travel watercolor palettes because i'll envision myself like i don't know sailing down a canal in a gondola with my little watercolors i don't know but I do love my travel palettes and it's fun. It's fun. And I don't know. I just love watercolor palettes anyways, I like doctoring them up and my fancy thing. I did do a video on this. It's very long. I don't really recommend anyone follows the tutorial. <laughs> I watch the video, make your own, sun, your own, um, your, watch the video, see how I did it. And then, uh, listen to how I would have done it. And then you'd probably even come up with better ideas to do it yourself. But sometimes you just gotta, you gotta work through something. You have to try it. You've got to leap before you look and you have to play and figure out um, what's going to work and what's not. It's, it's one thing to like read a book that tells you exactly how to do something. It's a whole other thing to actually do it. And one thing my father always said was, if you, want, if you want to learn how to build a house, build a house. He was a house builder. And that's true. If, any, if you want to learn how to do anything, just do it. You'll probably do it wrong. You'll make mistakes, but you're going to learn and you're going to grow. And it's going to stick with you so much better than if you um, read a book about it first and then did it. I mean, you may avoid a few errors, but you might not know why you don't do something this way. It's like, have you ever bought those... Um, those peel and stick floor tiles, you know, <laughs> from the from our early poverty decor times of life. Or, you know, maybe just want a quick refresh of a room, right? So you buy those peel and stick floor tiles, you're not ready to commit to flooring, you just want to do something fast, right? And it always tells you, start in the middle of the room. Now, how many out there read that and said, well, that's silly. If I start in the middle of the room, I'm going to have to cut all the tiles on the outside. I'm starting on an edge. Huh? Show of hands, who started on an edge? This girl starts on an edge because it makes no sense. Why? Why? Why do you start in the middle of the room? Why do you make plumb lines in the middle of the room and start in the middle of the room? That makes no sense. Because your walls probably are not square. And then you start getting these little, you start getting these little gaps at the corners as you go. And the gaps get a little bit bigger as you go. And are you going to peel all those up and start again? Probably not. You're just going to live with those gaps for the rest of your life. And, uh, but you're going to remember in the next room you do, it's going to be perfect. It's going to be chef's kiss, but you got to have the bad pancakes. You've got to make the mistakes. And that's how you learn. Cause you know what? You might do the, you might follow the directions, do it in the middle and then be like, why do I, why do I do it that way? I have a funny story. My friend Kathy told me, um, her, her grandmother would always cook this ham, a uh, ham for Easter and they would chop the ends off the ham. They'd put it in the roasting pan and they'd bake it. And then her mother did the same thing. And so she asked one day, she's, why do we cut the ends 
why do we always cut the ends? Or she asked her grandmother, why do we cut the ends off the ham before I cook it? And the grandmother goes, because it wouldn't fit in the pan I had otherwise. So like these, these other generations of women were cooking the Easter ham, cutting the ends off the ham, but they had bigger pans. They didn't have to, but they always, they cut the ends off because their mother showed them how to do it that way. But she was only doing it because it wouldn't fit in her pan any other way. So I think it's good to try it and see what happens, you know, and then maybe adjust course, or maybe you come up with a whole new way to, to cook your ham that works better. I'm a vegetarian, I wouldn't know. But there is one thing, like my mother always uh, would cut the ends off cucumbers and she'd rub the end of the cucumber on the cucumber and then slice off the next piece. And so I was making a salad or something and I was I was doing that, I cut the end off, I rub it against the end, I'm cutting the other end and my husband's looking at me like I have two heads, like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm taking the bitters out. <laughs> He's like, what? This is how you take the bitters out of the cucumber. And it's like, what are you talking about? Like that white stuff that comes out of the cucumber, that's the bitters. You take the bitters out and your cucumber is sweeter and it tastes better. And and he's like, that you have made that up. That is not a real thing. I'm like, that is a real thing. That's how my mother showed me how to cut cucumbers. You slice the end off, you rub the ends, you take the bitters out, and you, sl you slice off the bitter slice, and then that's how you cut cucumbers. I don't know if my cucumbers are sweeter because I do that, but I'll tell you to this day, I cut the bitters out. Unless it's a European cucumber, they're not bitter. But any standard American cucumber, I cut those bitters off. <laughs> I rub the bitters out of the cucumber. <laughs> Let me know, anybody else do that? Does anybody else take the bitters out of their cucumbers? Um, and also, anybody have cucumber radish and lettuce with mayonnaise with their dinner growing up? I don't know if that's a Canadian thing. Um, I'm from Maine, my dad's uh, family was French Canadian. So I don't know if it's a Canadian thing, but uh, radish, cucumber, lettuce with mayo salads. Anyone else? Anyone? Uh, I actually had a whole list of things to chit chat about, but we've managed to fill up the time. And thank you so much for taking my mind off my worries. Uh, I'm so glad I did record this because I was just kind of like spinning my wheels. It's like nothing I can do but uh, sit and watch, wait for my sister to text me. So um, I think I am going to say farewell to you today. I'm, I'm actually going to call her and see if she knows anything. Uh, last time I did, she still didn't know anything, but um, I feel helpless. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and if I'm around, if everything's hunky-dory, I will see you in the chat below. If not, chat amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Just talk. No big whoop. <laughs> Who remembers that? Oh, guys, thank you so much for being part of the community. I appreciate you, and until next time, happy crafting. Bye!